Perikeratosis means nuclei that are retained in the cornea layer. Normally, the stratum corneum is loose, flaky, dead keratin without any nuclei, but the nuclei are retained here. And the reason that happens, perikeratosis is a sign that the epidermis is growing too quickly. Normally, cells go from the basal layer up to the top of the epidermis and then die and turn into the stratum corneum. That normally takes about 28 days, give or take. But when you have the epidermis growing too quickly, for whatever reason, the cells grow too quickly, the granular layer never has time to develop, and normally the granular layer plays a role in the cell breaking down and turning into a normal stratum corneum. But here, actually this area over here shows it the best, that here you have lost the granular layer and then you've got perikeratosis on top. Over here right next to it, you have a nice thick granular layer and orthokeratosis on top. In this case, the orthokeratin is a little compacted together and the granular layer is thicker than usual. And that's because this patient has been picking and scratching at their actinic keratosis. So this is a, 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 a reactive change of the epidermis. It gets thicker, gets hypergranulosis, and it gets kind of compact, dense keratin. And it has a little band here that we call the stratum lucidum, which is normally only present in the palms and soles or in skin that's been scratched. So this process is called lichenification or lichen simplex chronicus. It's a reactive thickening of the epidermis from scratching. And most people who have actinic keratosis or any other kind of little skin lesion like that, a lot of times pick, people scratch and pick at their skin lesions. I know I've done it and I'm sure you probably have too. So it's normal to see kind of thickening and lichenification next to some of these skin lesions. But I thought it's a nice contrast here of when you have parakeratosis, usually you have very little or no granular layer. And when you have orthokeratosis, usually you have a granular layer. So it's a good contrast between how parakeratosis and loss of the granular layer go hand in hand and how orthokeratosis and presence of the granular layer go hand in hand. And you can see this, whether it's actinic keratosis, squamous cell carcinoma in situ, or even reactive things or inflammatory things like psoriasis, where the epidermis grows too quickly. The, in psoriasis, the keratinocytes go from the basal layer to the top in about like seven or 10 days, and it's not enough time for a granular layer to develop, so you get parakeratosis and loss of the granular layer.